Hey, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Listen, I'm not going to act like I was excited for Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom and then was disappointed by Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom. I genuinely did not know that it was called Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom until I started writing this sentence. F*** me. I love James Wan. One of the first videos I ever made as a wee high top was called Aquaman Needs to be Great, where I riffed on about how dope James Wan is as a filmmaker and how, by all means, he should be able to direct the massive superhero movie with the utmost grace. And he did it. He was the best thing about the first Aquaman. His passion on display, his excess of visual flair, and a never still camera with colors that explode. He was never embarrassed of the material, instead embracing the camp with dignity and no shame. Everything else about the first Aquaman wasn't for me. A horrendously pedestrian script where characters spewed exposition with not an ounce of humanity or genuine truth behind any of the words spoken. Are you saying they executed her? I was so disappointed. The first Aquaman went on to make a billion dollars, so what the hell do I even know? Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom doubles down on everything that didn't work about the first and dilutes everything that did. Gone is the silly sincerity and clear passion behind the camera replaced by cynical corporate cynicism crossed with a who even cares attitude. It's forgettable, it's bland, it's all these adjectives, blah, 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 blah. Got it, got it, got it. But, I also think Aquaman 2 is the perfect showcase of why audiences have fallen so out of love with this kind of superhero movie. The worst thing about Aquaman 2, the perfect representation of exactly why the DCEU has come to an end, funnily enough, to me, by far the worst thing about Aquaman 2 is Aquaman. But before we get into it, consider checking out my Patreon page. It's only a dollar a month and it goes a long way in helping me create these videos and our feature f***ing film. Plus, the more patrons I have on there, the less shady business deals I'll Smell take, meaning month. less ads for you and a better chance I don't end up burning in hell. <laughs> but seriously, thank you guys so much. Happy New Year. I did not know if I was even going to make a video on this. I doubt many of you are aqua stands that ran to the nearest theater opening night. I didn't even know if I would have anything of use or at least anything passionate to say to you. But then on the ride home, I had one of my usual hyperbolic epiphanies slap me across the face. I probably have never seen a movie or seldom seen one where the titular character is by fish fucking far the worst thing about a film. Aquaman himself, Arthur Curry, takes away everything that could work, every bit of spectacle that excites character that is fun to watch or drama that sells, and he drowns it, sinking the entire thing. And look, I have nothing against Jason Momoa. I don't know the guy. He seems passionate enough about the character, caring and entirely gracious to the fans, to Zack Snyder for how much playing Arthur has changed his life. But listen, man, his Aquaman here is just insufferable. He's not even pretending to be Aquaman anymore. This is a Lobo audition tape and I'm here for it. Hope he gets the gig. That would be perfect. But there's just no humanity left in his Arthur. There's no performance to watch. Just a parody of the big badass with a heart vibe. It doesn't feel like he's acting. It feels like he's doing an SNL bit in a costume. He's getting paid bank to be in a self-parody slapstick bit while hitting his mark. And you know what? Good for him. Fuck, get that bag, bro. I don't even blame the guy. What is he supposed to do with a script like this? A script where the lead is so incompetent, so childish, and so inhuman that all that's left is a caricature. A script with no arc, no journey, and barely any choices made by the protagonist. I don't even mind the departure from the more solemn, serious Aquaman that I'm used to, the one in the Justice League cartoons or the Jeff Johns comics that I grew up with. I know what I'm getting at this point, or at least I thought I did. What I do mind is that every single line spoken by Momoa feels like a horrendous improv that is hilariously unfunny and should have been left on the cutting room floor. Feels like an AI-generated great value MCU quip that made nobody in my theater laugh and made me want to water born myself. He stumbles and fumbles alongside Patrick Wilson's Orm, who reminds me so much more of traditional Arthur Curry. Not just the fact that Patty Boy looks just like him, but the fact that somehow, some way, the bad guy from the first movie, the bad brother, the discount Loki, Call me. Ocean Master has far more of an arc, is far more interesting a character, and has a far greater sense of responsibility than Arthur ever does in this film. 
What sense does that make, man? Somebody had to realize somewhere along the way that the protagonist, the hero, is made to look like an inconsiderate, lazy flounder. I was on Orm's damn side from the start. This dumbass should never be allowed anywhere near the throne. I would not trust this clownfish to save me from constipation, let alone save the world and bring peace between the land and the sea. At least Zack Snyder's take on Arthur had genuine charisma, a sort of intensity about him that made him fun to watch. Hell, even the first movie had more to the character, more heart. I'm not saying he was ever complex, deep. He was always pretty shallow. But he ain't even in the pool for this one. Not even Yaya's hilariously angry and vengeful Black Manta or the sight of the Aqua Baby moments away from being skewered can make me feel an ounce of stress, of threat when Jason's Arthur gets more passionate about burgers and Guinness than he does about stopping global warming or saving anyone. Arthur has more chemistry with the fizzling frothy foam of a freshly cracked cold one than he does with his wife, his brother, his mother, or his son. And maybe someone, somewhere, let's call him Jim, thought that we would find that funny. Some exec probably thought Thor 4 was going to be universally beloved and figured they should double down on the frat bro hero. But the joke got stale by the time the piss came flying into his mouth for the second time in 15 minutes. Jesus Christ. The irony of a plot that preaches the solution to climate change as global cooperation and Atlantean technology being spoon-fed to audiences like something they should feel hope about is barely better than if Arthur handed his baby a beer to shut him up for a few hours, which I could see happening in this movie. Making an Aquaman story about global warming seems perfect. I love that idea on paper, but on said paper, there needs to be nuance, depth, soul. This feels like the mega conglomerate producing this film hopes to hide behind the idea that we'll believe one day through the power of a himbo and his aqua pals rising from the ocean that together we can defeat irreversible ecological collapse that's caused by the Flying Dutchman. It's bleak, man. It's really bleak. I don't want to blame anyone for this because nobody sets out to make something that gets panned hated. I can't blame anyone other than the powers that be. Michael Keaton Batman was supposed to be here somewhere. That got scrapped. Then Ben Affleck shot some shit. That got scrapped. Aquaman 2 was reshot to hell and doesn't even pretend that it wasn't. You'll go from the most beautiful set build, a classic James Wan indulgent, expressive, sweeping camera move to the most generic green screen single where the actors look completely different, feel completely out of the moment, and are just waiting for the test score to be high enough so they can move on with their lives. You'll see that switch constantly, consistently. And it's sad, man. If you're going to trust anybody to do their thing, make their movie, it's the guy who started not just one, not just two but three huge and beloved horror franchises before he was 40. It's the guy who turned freaking Aquaman into a billion dollar hit. I felt like Juan's voice as a filmmaker sung in the first film, but here, it's sometimes hard to catch even a whisper. Who knows what the original vision was? Who knows what Momoa's original pitch was and how much of that passion remained once the factory was finished with it, churning out a capsizing cash cow? The last shot of the damn movie is seemingly a prime example of this. The last line ever spoken in the DC Extended Universe is a joke a parody of what built the ever-sinking ship of modern superhero movies. I am Aquaman, as he hollers like a rock star into the mic. A meme, a blooper that feels like Jason Momoa having some fun, that feels like it should have been buried in the trench of the DVD extras. What a send-off, a eulogy, an embodiment of the problem I've always had with the DCEU. I never knew any of the Justice League. I saw them as icons, knights of the round table, but never as persistent and consistently developed human beings. I was supposed to love them, but the storytellers never spent enough time establishing them. I showed up to these movies for the filmmakers and my pre-established and pre-existing childhood love of the characters that Warner Brothers never felt they had to earn. 
forcing Snyder to throw a PowerPoint presentation for the next 10 years of the DC Extended Universe in the middle of his deconstructionist anti-superhero movie was not enough to ever get me invested in this world's Barry Allen, this Arthur Curry, telling me how important and grand Cavill Superman was or how broken and longing for change Ben Affleck's Bruce was only went so far when your entire universe was so disjointed, so insanely scrapped together. They needed Batman to boost Superman's box office right when Clark's story was about to start. It wasn't about where to take that story. It wasn't about getting us to fall in love with these takes on these icons. It was all about rushing along so that they could have their billion dollar team up. Character development, the slow scenes of reflection is what they chose to cut, chose to rewrite and retool because they believed all we cared about was the action, the jokes, and the cameos. I cannot believe it's been a decade of DCEU and the only character I feel like was given enough time to shine, the only character whose journey I could somewhat track without needing to see two director's cuts that should have been the theatrical was Margot Robbie's Harley. The worst thing about Aquaman 2 in my mind is the worst thing about the now dead DCEU. Their heroes never felt all that super. The beautiful iconography, the unique visions were trampled on by ever-shifting management. These characters cannot possibly feel real when their actions are decided by test scores and preconceived notions of what we want to see. I never got to know who any of these people were behind their scales, their masks, because there was not nearly enough care put into the humanity behind the super and never enough compassion for the filmmakers tasked with giving us their souls. Never enough trust in us that we want, that we'd rather witness well-written stories with heroes that are all too human, more than we desire those grand bits of stale, stylish scale. The worst thing about Aquaman 2 is Aquaman. The worst thing about the DCU was seemingly how little the people behind it understood why we give a damn about DC. Anyways, rip. Dostoevsky. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. This was a fun one to do. I say that every time. Uh, most of the time I'm lying, but this time I'm not. Or am I lying? I don't know. Usually, I usually fucking hate being negative. Um, I don't even know. It just felt chopped to the bone, you know? I don't blame James Wan or Jason Momoa or anyone, really. Uh, anyways, thank you to that one doesn't count for editing this video. This was the second video he's edited for me. I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, Jason is delayed, but it's coming out. It's turning out so well, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. Thank you. Uh, have a lovely, lovely, happy holidays. Fuck. Happy holidays. Thank you for watching, and have a lovely, 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 lovely day.